Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a minute. I'm actually getting ready to film a haul for this channel. So um, I thought why not sit down and film while I get ready and do like a little life update because it's been a minute. So um, yeah, if you're new, subscribe, like this video, blah, 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 all that. Anyways, so it has been a while since I've been on here. And if you guys follow, um, the couples channel that me and my boyfriend have it has been a whole year since we posted on that one but we actually do have some videos coming soon for that one already filmed so stay tuned for that i feel like i don't really talk a lot about personal stuff on here um but one of the main reasons that i have not been filming is i've been dealing with like crazy health issues since well, honestly, the last couple years, but like majorly since um, September of 2022. So like the last, what is that? Like seven, eight months. It's been nonstop for me. Um, been in the hospital, been working with countless doctors to try and figure out what the hell's going on. And it's just so frustrating because it seems like I can't go a single day without feeling normal. So basically what started the whole thing um, was in September, we went to Vegas with one of Leo's friends and um, his girlfriend. And like, I was fine, everything was fine. And uh, the first day and night was cool. And then the next day we woke up, went to get Starbucks and something to eat and we're gonna meet his friends later on in the day. We were walking around, I think the shops in like Bellagio or something like that. We went outside and met up with him. Mind you, it's September, so it, it's not like scorching hot, but it was definitely warm. Um, keep in mind, I don't drink or do drugs or any of that, which will make sense later. So yeah, we were outside, not even for that long, like literally maybe five, 10 minutes just meeting up with them and then we walked over to, um, I think we went to Caesar's Palace and we were inside walking around all the shops and it was pretty busy. There was um, a big boxing match, I think it was, that day or the next day or something. So there was a lot of people, but crowds have never like affected me. Like I've never gotten overwhelmed by being around a lot of people or anything like that. But anyways, we're like walking around all the shops and I started noticing that I like got really out of breath, like out of nowhere for no reason. We were just walking. And then I tried to just like, you know, breathe through it because I was like, okay, let me not work myself up. Like I'm fine, whatever. But as we kept walking, I could, I started feeling like off, like really weird. And we got in line to go into this shoe store and we were standing there and like within the first like two minutes of us standing there, I told Leo, I was like, I don't feel well. Like, I don't know what's going on. I, I was starting to feel like I was gonna pass out. And that's why I said like, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. Um, we were inside. So I had no idea what the hell was going on. And he was like, do you wanna sit down? Like, what do you wanna do? And like within, that 30 seconds it got to the point where i was like fuck like i do not feel well so we walked to like the literally right up around the corner there's a little fountain thing if you guys have been to caesar's palace you probably know what i'm talking about um inside not the fountain outside so we walk over there and sit on the ledge and i am just like not feeling well like i feel like i'm gonna pass out i'm starting to feel like really sick to my stomach just terrible you know i had been drinking water nothing was helping and so the freaking fountain show started and so we had to move and we went and sat around the corner and we were probably sitting there for like i don't know like at least 20 30 minutes because like you know when you get lightheaded like usually you sit down drink some water like it, it'll go away so i'm just like waiting for this <laughs> to go away and it's not like i I feel absolutely horrible, like in between wanting to throw up and pass out. Like 
I was sitting there fanning myself because I felt like I was getting on and off like really hot. It was just terrible. And so Leo was like, okay, we need to probably take you back to the room. But mind you, where we had parked our car in Vegas was not a close walk. And I'm sitting there like, fuck, like, I don't know how I'm gonna make it all the way back to the car. Cause we parked at, I think it's the Bellagio, which is right next to Caesars. But that it wasn't a, it was like a 15 minute walk, maybe 20 minutes, I don't know. So I was like, okay, um, his friends came over and they were like, you know what's wrong? And I just told him, I was like, I don't know, maybe I'm having a panic attack, I'm not really sure. Cause I do suffer from anxiety, but like I said, never to the point where it affects me around crowds. And my kind of anxiety is like feeling anxious or like I can't breathe type thing. Like not like nauseous or I'm gonna pass out. So we told his friends we were gonna go back to the room. They left and whatever. And then finally I was like, okay, like let's try and go. We probably walked maybe like 20 seconds and I grabbed onto Leo's arm because I was about to like lose consciousness. And um, there was like this little, like, it was like an emergency exit door. And so I went on the floor, like over there and I was just sitting down. I could not walk, I could not move. I didn't know what the fuck was happening. Like. It was just, it was terrible. Leo had asked like one of the little kiosk ladies, like, is there a quicker way out of here? Like something's wrong with her. She's not feeling well. We need to get out of here. And she was just like, go through the emergency exit. So Leo had to carry me because I could not walk. Um, I like couldn't see straight. Like, oh, it was just so horrible and so he carries me out the exit leads to like this back alley area and then like across the way um it leads up into the parking garage of caesar's palace so he carries me up into the parking garage um it's like the valet area and i was like just set me down here because like being out in the sun walking all the way to our car is gonna make it worse so he sat me down there and he went to get the car. Mind you, that took like 30 minutes because like I said, it was not close. And so I was just sitting there like literally dying. The valet people were so nice. They were like, are you okay? Um, and I was like, no, like something's wrong. I don't feel well. They brought me like a cold bottle of water and I was just sitting there waiting for Leo to come back. So Leo comes and gets me and we go to the back to our hotel room. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Maybe I just need to like lay down for a little bit and like take a nap and I'll feel better. And so I did that, I took a nap, but like every time I would get up, like even to go to the bathroom or even just laying there, like I felt so off. Like, I don't know, it was the weirdest thing, it was terrible. And that night we were supposed to go out to a bar or casino to watch the fight. And I was like, I don't think I can. Like. I I could barely get up and back to the bathroom. And so we ended up staying in, which totally sucked. <laughs> that was our last night there. We were only there for two nights. So we ended up staying in, watched the fight on uh, Leo's phone. And I'm like, okay, like I'm just gonna sleep for the night and like maybe I'll feel better in the morning. Next morning, I'm like, I still don't feel 100%. Like I still feel really off. Um, but I don't necessarily feel like I'm going to pass out anymore. So the plan Sorry. So the plan for that day was to meet his friends to go get something to eat and then Like walk around and go shopping But as soon as we got our stuff to the car and we're going to meet them like I started not feeling well again Like it was like coming in waves like it's like if I was standing and up mostly then i would feel like i was gonna pass out like it was just really strange i had drinking a ton of water like i wasn't dehydrated i don't know what the hell was going on so anyways we go to get something to eat we tell the, his friends like we're just gonna leave because i'm not feeling well so leo drives home because i definitely can't drive and then on on and off throughout the car ride i was i was just not feeling well like i don't know what the hell was wrong so over the next like week after we got home, I just tried to like rest and take it easy because I was like, you know, it'll go away, obviously. Like maybe I was somehow dehydrated or 
maybe it was anxiety or whatever. Like, I don't know. But I was like, if I rest, it's gonna go away. Um, it didn't. I remember we tried to go grocery shopping. On the way to the grocery store, I was like, I started feeling like I was gonna pass out again. And I was like, what the hell? So literally, Leo had to go in the grocery store and FaceTime me <laughs> and do all the shopping. Like, it was just like multiple times throughout that next week that I was like almost passing out. And I'm like, finally, I was like, okay, we need to go to the doctor because like, this is not normal. Like one time, yeah, fine, like whatever. But multiple times, like throughout that next week, like no. So we end up going to the ER. I think it was like late afternoon, like something like that. Um, BRB, let me finish this contour really quick and I'll be right back. All right, so we go to the ER in the afternoon and um, it's freaking packed. Like it is so packed and I am like fanning myself. I'm freaking get hot and chills and like, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. So Leo takes me in in a wheelchair. Cause I know if I had to stand there, I would have been on the floor. Maybe they would have taken me in quicker. But so anyways, we're, we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting literally for hours like they take you back semi quickly to like take your blood and whatever but then you're back out to the <laughs> lobby or the waiting room and so we're waiting leo has to wake up at seven the next day for work uh because it was a weekday and at that point we had been waiting in the lobby to get called back like for an actual room i think like seven hours or something because at this point leo's like falling asleep in the chair and i think it was like one in the morning something like that and finally i told him i was like you know what just go to the car like try and get some sleep because it was like cold in there like nobody wants to be around sick people and i wanted him to get sleep you know because he had to work the next day so eventually he finally <laughs> goes to the car um not long after he goes to the car of course i get called back and so i text him and let him know but he's sleeping and it's whatever and like i said it was so busy that day that i ended up getting put on a bed in the hallway like when you get taken back into the er i didn't get one of the little like rooms that they actually have i was in a bed on the hallway which looking back was like honestly such a blessing because of like what happened next you know basically they're they ran my blood and they were like you know we're gonna just keep you here um and hydrate you while we wait for your blood work and blah 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 because maybe you were just like super dehydrated or you know whatever so i'm just sitting there feeling like shit. they hook me up to an iv with like a bag of saline or something like that and they come back and i had to go get um, a CAT scan because they wanted to make sure that um, I didn't have any blood clots because my blood work came back and they do this test called a D-dimer which can detect blood clots and it came back elevated. So they were concerned that maybe I had a blood clot in my lung or you know somewhere that was causing these symptoms. So I had to get a CAT scan. Um, it was fine. I didn't have any blood clots at least in my chest area and so i'm sitting on the little bed thing they come and hook up another bag of saline but they put it in this like pressure thing so that it gets into your bloodstream faster i guess i don't really know um i've never seen it before he was like this just squeezes it basically um like i said to go in faster so they do that and i'm like sitting there on my phone just i think i was like watching netflix or something to try and like distract myself because at this point we had been there like nine ten hours and i'm exhausted i feel like shit and um so i'm just sitting there and all of a sudden like i start to feel this like burning pain sensation like the best way to i could describe it is like if i had like boiling acid inside my chest like it was nothing like I had ever felt. And it was like slowly, slowly creeping up. And so I'm like, I was like feeling it and I was like, okay, this, this doesn't feel right. And then it starts getting to the point where I'm like feeling like 
I can't like breathe in without excruciating pain. And so luckily I'm in the hallway because if I was in a room and I was trying to like flag somebody down or even press the call button and be like, oh, you know, like something's wrong. It got to the point where I couldn't talk. So that's why I said like, you know, everything happens for a reason and thank God I was in the hallway where I was. And so luckily like I was almost directly across from the nurse's station. And so I like turned around and I like flagged down my um, nurse and he was so, so nice. Like he was so attentive the whole time I was there. Like, cause he could tell how I was feeling. He would check on me literally every five to 10 minutes. And so he sees me like, <clears throat> struggling like and <laughs> he comes over and I'm like going like this because I God it makes me like <clears throat> just thinking about it um I was like going like this and he was like you can't breathe and I was like like something's wrong with my chest and all of a sudden like as soon as I try and talk like the pain just hits me like it hurt so bad it was like like I said like boiling acid inside my chest and when I started trying to talk I I could not talk any any longer. I could no longer talk. And every time I would try and take a breath, it would like forcefully make my body cough. Like I had no control over what was happening. So I was just coughing, 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 coughing. He, I can see the panic in his eyes because it was like zero to a hundred in like, 30 seconds. I can see he's freaking out a little bit. Um, I'm definitely freaking out because I can barely breathe and I can't stop coughing and I have this excruciating pain going on. And so he's like, hold on, I'm gonna hook you up to an EKG because it probably looked like I was having a heart attack. Um, so they hook me up to an EKG. They hook me up to like the thing that gets your heart rate and your blood pressure and all that. My body starts like shaking, probably cause I was like panicking and he's shaking because he's nervous, obviously, like something's happening. And um, so he was like, hold on, like I'm gonna grab a doctor. Next thing I know, I have probably five doctors surrounding my little bed in the hallway and um, they lay my bed flat and the doctor comes over and she's like, why is her heart rate so high? It was like 170 or 180, like, and I was just sitting there and she was like, what was she doing? And he was like, she's just been laying here. Like she's telling me that her chest is hurt, like burning and like she can't stop coughing. They're trying to tell me like, take a deep breath and hold it because when you're doing the EKG, you're supposed to be very still. That was not gonna happen. She was like, I know it hurts, just try. Could not do it. My heart rate is continuing to go up. They can't get a reading on the EKG. I can't stop coughing. So they end up like rushing me into the resuscitation room, which is like, <laughs> this big room back in the ER with everything that they could possibly need to like save somebody's life. Like, of course, Leo wasn't in there. And I'm just like, like those, I think it lasted probably like five or 10 minutes, but it seemed like a lifetime. Like in that moment, I swear to God, I was so scared that like, this was it. This is the one that takes me out. So. Finally, like, I don't know, they gave me something. I don't know what they gave me. Um, but finally, like the coughing slowed down. The burning was like subsiding. They were able to get an EKG. I wasn't having a heart attack, obviously. They didn't know if like a, I had a blood clot somewhere else and it traveled or they had no idea. So they ended up admitting me to the hospital because they were like, okay, like we, we cannot let this girl go home. We have no idea what just happened. So I call Leo and wake him up and <laughs> tell him what happened. And I tell him, you know, like we've been through this before. Like the last couple years I have been in the hospital, I think probably five different times, unfortunately. And so I told him like, I'm going to be saying, can you go home and get, you know, my pillow and my charger and whatever. So he goes and does that. I'm waiting for them to admit me. So that happened and then um, I get upstairs and like my nurse was so, so nice. Like the main lady who was taking care of me, I think she was actually the charge nurse and she was so sweet. Like um, she was like a little mama bear. And anyways, that turned out to be an experience from hell because I got stuck with this doctor who 
I don't know. Like, I feel like if you are in the medical field, you should listen to like what patients are telling you is going on and not just like thinking that you know what is right all the time because you don't. Basically, like they were running different tests, trying to see like if it was my heart and um, you know, they were like, you're gonna have to start going to a cardiologist and all this crap. And um, I had told them because they were trying to see if my heart rate was causing me to feel like I'm gonna pass out. They, the doctor that I had totally disregarded what happened in the ER. Um, which still to this day, I have absolutely no idea. Like, it's a mystery. They didn't seem to care. Well, he didn't. And so I was trying to tell him that even when I'm sitting down sometimes and my heart rate is at a normal resting rate, like these waves of me feeling like I was gonna pass out would happen. It wasn't always when I was, you know, my heart rate went up, but he wanted to give me basically like a beta blocker to keep my heart rate from rising. But the past few nights that I had been in the hospital, my blood pressure dropped really low, like 90 over like 58 or something like that. And below that is dangerous. And um, the specific medicine that he wanted to give me also lowers your blood pressure. And if your blood pressure drops too much, you can have a stroke, you can have a heart attack, you can like all these things can happen. And I'm like, why are we, like I was so confused and he didn't want to explain it to me. He didn't want to address my concerns. Um, his intern, I barely saw him. His intern came in and I was trying to tell him like, you know, my heart rate is normal at this very second and I feel like, like it's happening again. So why am I gonna take something to slow my heart even more and drop my blood pressure even more when my heart rate is clearly not the issue? And um, even his intern, he was like, no, that makes sense. Like, I'm not really sure, I'll ask him, all this stuff. Basically, it, it got down to the point where he was like, the doctor basically said, take this medicine or get out. And I was like shocked because if he had just come in and explained to me like calmly what his thought process was, why he wanted to try this, like, what backup measures they had if this medicine had a bad side effect on me because of how low my blood pressure was already made me feel comfortable, I probably would have done it. I would have stayed and, and taken what he wanted me to take. But like I'm a firm believer in advocating for yourself and I had another instance before in the hospital that um, I did the same thing. I advocated for myself and it turned out to be correct and what they would have given me that last time would have made me extremely sick. And so anyways, I stood my ground and unfortunately like um, even my nurses, they told me that I recommend you go somewhere else because clearly this doctor is not listening. He's not paying attention. Um, I had one nurse tell me like, I don't even recommend you taking this. Obviously like I can't give you advice, but um, she's like, I've never seen a doctor act this way and I don't blame you for wanting to leave. Like this doctor literally yelled at my grandma. My grandma wanted to talk to him. She knows a lot about the medical field. She wanted to talk to him about the whole situation, why he wanted to put me on that medication. And he literally was yelling at her. Like it was just, it was insane. Like nothing like I've ever seen before. So I was like, okay, well then I'm gonna leave. Nothing was solved. They weren't you know, they weren't able to figure anything out. They had sent over like extensive blood work to um, the Mayo Clinic and that was gonna be a few days before I got any results. But if I didn't take that medicine, he was telling me I had to leave. And obviously like, I don't wanna take up a room when somebody else needs it in the hospital, right? But I was just like, it's not that I wanna say, but I just wanna figure out like what the hell is going on because I can't live like this. Like every time I try and go do something, I almost pass out. It's just whatever. So I left. Um, I didn't end up going to another hospital because I was just exhausted, like mentally, physically. I just wanted to go home. And so I end up going to like my regular primary doctor who then sends me to a cardiologist and a neurologist. Um, because most of the time, if you're passing out, it has something to do with your heart. 
but I guess rarely it could be with your brain, but um, yeah. So literally since then, September, I think I started going to doctors in October. It is now the end of March and I am still dealing with the same shit. I have a cardiologist appointment almost two or three times a month. Um, I've been to the neurologist two or three times. I have to get, I have an MRI coming up because they want to make sure it's nothing with my brain. I have an EEG that I have to do, which basically um, makes sure that I'm not having any like mini strokes. Like I've had to wear heart monitors and do all these tests. Like it's just, it's a never ending thing, honestly. And it is so exhausting mentally. Like to this day, I still don't feel well. Majority of my days, I don't feel well. So that's a big reason why <laughs> I haven't um, been filming anything. So yeah, that's my life update. Um, I'm gonna go finish the rest of my makeup really quickly off camera and I will be right back. All right, makeup is done. Hair is slowly drying. Um, but yeah, that is my short version, honestly, of my life update. Uh, it's a lot of stuff I don't normally talk about. Like sometimes I'll post on my Instagram story about my doctor's appointments and stuff, but um, that's kind of the full story of how it all started and what I'm still dealing with. It has caused so much anxiety for me in the last eight months that I've been dealing with it. And now this anxiety that I have is like debilitating. Like um, even me going to the grocery store or to the movies or anywhere that I go now, I have such anxiety because I'm so scared that I'm going to pass out or I'm going to, you know, like something like what I've been dealing with is going to happen while I'm out. And that's like caused major anxiety regardless of where I'm at, who I'm with. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I am now going to film a new haul for you guys. So make sure you check it out. It'll probably be after this video. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening and it feels good to be back filming again. And don't forget to check out our couples channel because we have a lot of stuff coming up over there. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video.